Hey guys, it's Spence with your Lab Secrets Tip of the Day. Today I'm excited. I'm going to be introducing a new piece of technology that really I've personally been waiting for for a long time. As many of you already know, most of the demonstrations I give using online browsers are involving responsive or the responsive theme, which means I want to demonstrate to you how the actual output is going to look if somebody was uh, on your site with an iPhone or an iPad, Android, or any other mobile device. Well, up till now I've had to show it via a browser extension that resized the windows, but you know, that's not fun. Instead now today I've got a new piece of software, it runs on Mac and I just want to demonstrate it for you here so that if you're on a Mac and you're going to make your own screencasts or do anything else to demonstrate your product to a customer, you can have the same kind of fun effect as I'm showing here. All right. So the product itself is something I'm going to show on the screen, it's called Reflector and I've got to just turn it on here and in the video that follows in a minute you're going to see actually my uh, iPad mini showing the on-screen stuff. But basically it's really simple to set up. On the Mini itself, you just turn it on after you've already installed and uh, activated the software. And there'll be an option, which I'm going to show you in a second, that will show you to share via air, wirelessly, the entire screen and audio with your computer. From there, I'm running ScreenFlow 4.0 that allows me to record that, and then I can share it with you. So, this is the device I'm going to be using and I'm using the software on screen, which I'll share with you in the show notes, and then check out how fun this can be. Let's get into it. Now I turn the mirroring switch on, and then you'll see, oh my goodness, there it is. And you're seeing now exactly what I'm seeing. So basically, the button that I'm talking about is right at the bottom of this uh, display here. You can see the blue TV-looking object with a triangle in front of it, uh, right next to the volume. So if I move the volume knob, it's right there just to the left of that little adjuster, okay? And what's neat about this is that you are now seeing exactly what I'm seeing, which is really terrific for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is if I wanted to actually demonstrate anything on the screen, this is in real time. And I can go, for example, to a browser and open it up, and I could browse to an address here, like one of my favorites, labzip.com, and all my keystrokes, everything else are demonstrable. Now here's a real neat trick with this. When I turn it into portrait mode, it goes with me, right? Super, super cool. So this is going to be the way that I'm going to demonstrate a lot of the stuff that we're working on. For example, if I go over here to uh, our lab playground where I do a lot of our demo videos, let's see, labplayground.com, <clears throat> it'll call up the responsive theme demo. And I'm working on some things here, so it's got an a uh, little error at the top I noticed, but the point is you can see that now we can view how the changes occur, see how the navigation menu adapts and the content adapts, all that good stuff. Now there's a couple other really neat tricks here, so let me run you through how the software works and then you're going to see this live in some of my videos. So when I'm done with the actual screen I hit escape and I can adjust some things. So this is where I wanted to start before. The full screen mode is what we just saw. That is that instead of having a nice background here that has my desktop, I can have a distraction-free experience with any color background I want. Now I can do black or white or any hexadecimal. I can also put in a chroma key color, which is basically a green or a blue that's easily removed, and that will allow me to have a layer of video showing just the iPad demo itself, but where I could float it on top of, let's say, one of my other video layers. And I'll show you that in some upcoming tutorials. Next, we've got the ability to have it always on top. And this is important if we're going to manipulate a number of windows. I can scale this and make it um, half size, for example. And maybe I want to put it up in the corner while I work on the screen, and then this will always be here. So even if I'm clicking on the screen, this won't go away. And that could be really important. Um, let me open up, let's say, a Chrome browser here. Let's give you an example. Normally, and let's just say I had it like this, normally if I was working on the Chrome browser, you know, that's not good. It's going to make the thing go away. So if I activate the always on top, now I can click away and da, 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 and do my thing and it doesn't have any effect at all. So pretty cool. Let's see a couple of the other options here. Scaling is neat because I can have it stretched to the size of the screen or show it an actual size. I'm on a pretty big monitor here. Uh, this is a Mac 27 inch iMac so it works pretty well but if you're on a laptop or something else you can adjust the size a little easier you can also force it into landscape mode 
uh, or portrait mode, which isn't what I want to do because I'm having it orienting the way that I'm actually holding it, right? So that's kind of important. If I turn that off, automatic orientation. We already kind of demonstrated this feature. All right, and then next we've got the skin. Now that's kind of cool. You can have either uh, the black or the black mini, the white or the white mini. I'm on a white mini, so that's what I'm showing, but I could, let's say, demonstrate it as a black mini. I can even use the other one. I'm not quite frankly sure what the difference is. Let's go take a look. It's, oh, I see what it is. It's a difference in the frame. So for example, if you want to really truly represent your frame and the orientation, go with the actual device. Uh, because in this case, the white mini is an exact replica. I see it's a little thinner here on the frame. All right, a couple other tricks. If I go into preferences, this is where you can optimize it. Now I've set it up um, for the iPad, but if I was demonstrating, let's say, some other high res device, or if I had the iPhone or iPhone 5, I would switch it so that it more fairly represents, well, more accurately represents what the actual screen dimensions are. And that will allow it also to stretch exactly those dimensions on screen. I've set this up for my local iMac, but you can set it up for a variety of machines and you can have it launch full screen by default. Here's where you can set the background color. And if I use the color picker, I could, for example, go into the wheel and pick out a nice chroma key color. Now, again, if you're not a technical person, don't worry about it. Chroma key is gonna be something in the green or blue family. You've seen the thing that's called green screen before, I'm sure. And it's just something that because this doesn't happen in nature, it's a very easy color to differentiate from any of the things that you might be wearing or the things that might show up as normal objects. And therefore the computer doesn't get confused and remove things it shouldn't. You can also have it set the full screen to be your desktop, which would mean whatever I have here. So that's kind of cool. And that's pretty much it. So I hopefully have given you a real little quick rundown. Let me show you, by the way, this is at reflectorapp.com. Uh, it's very inexpensive. You could try it for 10 uh, bucks. I'm sorry, you could try it for free for 10 minutes. And I believe it's $15. Yeah, $15 for a single seat license or 54 bucks for a full license. Completely worth it. I think you're going to see a lot of cool stuff from me doing this. And I look forward to showing you more. This is Spence, the evil genius. We'll see you next time. Thank you.